Waiting for it to hit 30. It's always that last minute that just dragged. Good evening. My name is John Hens. I'm the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Committee. I represent District 21, which consists of the south side of the city of Oshkosh along Lake Winnebago, around and including the airport. In a moment, I'll ask the other members of the committee to introduce themselves, and I'll also ask the staff to introduce themselves and explain the appeals procedure. Hearing process is as follows. Please turn off or silence your cell phones. All testimony is given for the record. Please come forward when recognized, and you will be sworn in by the stenographer. When talking, please speak clearly so that all in attendance can hear what you have to say. When you're giving your testimony, please state if you are for or against the item you're testifying about. The committee doesn't want conversations between members of the audience. If you feel the need to have a conversation with others, we would ask that you please leave the room. If you, if you have questions of a particular speaker, please come forward and ask your questions of the committee, and, and we will try to find out the answers for you. I'm trying to look up the date. It's a date. Um, no, August, something's right. August 4th, I think. Like August 4th. Okay. I wasn't sure and I didn't want to say that and be wrong. The, the committee will make its decision on August 4th. As with all county meetings, it is an open meeting. However, no additional testimony will be given at that time. This is your one and only opportunity to present testimony for the record. The deliberative meeting is held on the third floor conference room of the city administration building here on Otter Street. And the meeting time is 7.30 a.m. I'm Mary Beth Gabbert. <clears throat> I represent District 12, which is the northern portion of the city of Oshkosh and portion of the town of Oshkosh. Good evening. I am Tom Egan, and I represent District 33, which consists of the parts of the town of Armour, parts of the town of Ubudica, all of Poygan, all of Nipiestum, and all of Rushford. Uh, my name is Howard Miller. I represent District 36 which is the towns of uh, Wolf River, Winchester, and the western portion of Clayton. Good evening, I'm Shana Zastera. I represent District 32, which is part of Utica, Blackwood, and the Hyman. And I'm Terry Rowe, the Zoning Administrator with the Planning and Zoning Department. And the appeals process is as follows. Code amendment, zoning map. One, anyone wishing to protest the zoning map amendment needs to do so in less 24 hours prior to the item being considered by the county board. Contact the zoning office during normal working hours and staff will assist with this procedure. Two, an aggrieved person may appeal a final decision relative to a code amendment, either text or map amendment, by filing an appeal with a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the final decision. For a conditional use, one, an aggrieved person may file an appeal Claim the required procedural requirements were not followed relative to a condition of use of the Board of Adjustment prior to the issuance of the final decision or within 30 days of the issuance of the final decision. Contact the zoning office during normal working hours and staff will assist with this procedure. Two, an aggrieved person with their own legal counsel may appeal a final decision relative to a condition of use to a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the final decision. Carrie, move to item number one, Madam Vice Chair. Okay, item one, application 2023-ZC-6380, applicant Stephen Kratz, agent Nunn, location of premises, vacant parcels north and south of Duchess Lane, tax parcel number 002-0161 and 002-0161-01. Legal description being all of lots three and four of CSM-4300 located in the northeast quarter of the northeast quarter of Section 18, Township 18 North, Range 16 East, Town of Algoma, Winnebago County, Wisconsin. Explanation. Applicant is requesting a zoning change from A2, General Agriculture District, to R2, Suburban Residential District, for the creation of new lots. Thank you. And is the applicant for this one here? Yes. And did, did you have anything that you wanted to uh, speak about this on or? No, I think it's self explanatory. Uh, okay. Is there anybody here who would like to speak to this item that is not the petitioner? Anybody online? I see a hand for Jeff and Terry. So we have them up. 
Good evening. Do you want to raise your right hand? You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear the statements you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. State your name and address. Jeff Summers, one five five six Milton Circle. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I just had a question with regards to what appears on the report in the packet is that there is going to be properties developed just along along Duchess Lane. And I just wanted to get clarification if that is still the case. Uh, there was some confusion at the Algoma Town Hall meeting the other day. I think this time we should probably remember that question then we're gonna ask the petitioner after. So we, do we know what's going in there? This is just a zone change, so we don't know anything that's going on. But. This is Kerry Rose, zoning administrator. Currently, two whole parcels are being rezoned to residential, and there are, is or are uh, proposed certified survey maps, which are not on the agenda for review. That's reviewed by the town and the county. Okay, so that will happen at a later time then? Yes, this is just a zone change. This, this is, is just a zone change, but there's uh, the certified survey maps are not up for public review. That is just an administrative review by the county zoning office and the town. Okay, there was they were just included. That's why I wanted to ask the question. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Okay, do uh, anybody, does anybody here have any questions of anyone? Do we have any correspondence or communications? Uh, yes, we do have a resolution from the town of Algoma recommending approval with the following findings. Town has an adopted land use plan and town or action agrees with the town land use plan. Okay, thank you. That said, we will move on to item number two, Madam Vice Chair. Okay. Item two, application 2023-CU-6420, property owner Wisco Labs, LLC, agent Matt Mokler, tax parcel 012-0573-02, location of premises, 416 State Road 26, legal description, being all of lot one of CSM-7296, located in the southwest quarter of the northeast quarter of section 32, township 17 north, range 16 east, town of Nakaimai, Winnebago County, Wisconsin, code reference section 23.8-41, paren 904, paren description of proposed use, applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to expand an existing commercial kennel. Thank you. And do we have the petitioner here today for that one? And is there anything you would like to say on the record? Just here to answer questions. Okay. Is there anybody else here to speak on this item in person? A lot of head shaking. Is there anybody here on online who is here to speak to this item? If you are, just raise your hand or speak up. If... I think we lost someone, actually. <laughs> Okay, I'm not seeing anyone here to speak on the item. Um, <laughs> do you have any questions of the petitioner? I have a question. Before we ask, we need to have him come up and be sworn out. Can I raise your right hand? Tell where the statements you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and not have the truth. State your name, Amanda. Matt Mogler, uh, 410, sorry, 430 West 10th, Oshkosh Family. It's a real easy question. Then. Kind of yes or no. We were out there and viewing that. And will this just be an addition onto the building, or is it going to be fenced in the area? Or it could be a, a separate building. They're not going to connect. Um, the ma major purpose of the building is for the indoor doggy swing pool, but because it's tied to the kennel, um, we had to re up the conditional use permit that we already had for the kennel that's existing. So. Well, the swimming pool that you got there now will that be going inside? And yeah. Be... Yep. Okay. The pool right now is simply a temporary solution to keep the dogs swimming. 
till we get the billing bill. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears> hey, <throat> okay, do we have any correspondence or communications on this item? We do have a resolution from the town of Nakamai recommending approval with uh, no conditions. Okay, thank you. With that, we'll move on to item number three. Okay, item three, application number 2023-CU-6410, property owners, three house properties, LLC, agent none, tax parcel number 030-0042-01, location of premises, 7258 Royce Road, legal description being all of lot one of CSM-7566, located in the northeast quarter of the northeast quarter of section three, Township 19 North, Range 15 East, Town of Winnicott, Winnebago County, Wisconsin. Code reference section 23.8-41, paren 5.02, paren. Description of proposed use. Applicant is requesting conditional use permit for a campgrounds. Okay, thank you. Do we have the applicant here for this one? Or online? Yep, there he is. I'll unmute myself. I'm here. Okay, and uh, did you have anything you wanted to say to speak? No, nope, just, just here to answer questions. Let's see if we need to swear in. Okay, is there anybody here to speak on this item? I have a question. Okay, you can direct the questions to us and we'll try to get your answers for you. He's talking about yeah, he's been sworn in. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah, I forgot. You're probably going to be the truth. I'll switch to the truth. your name and address. Michael Wilsey. 5887 T Marlene with Okay, go ahead. Um, my first question is is um it's for a campsite. Is there any type of business plan to give us an idea of what the um intended use are or goals of, of this campsite? Okay. Or, or you want me to give you all my you direct the question, Sasa, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to him and we'll get the answer. Okay. For you. Um, who are the managing members of Free House Properties? Okay. Um, who are the property owners of 7250 Roy's Road? And then has there been any type of um, environmental studies or impact studies based on the potential amount of traffic or volume of people that would be staying here or renting at this campsite? Okay. I think that's good for starters. Well, let, let me come to Kerry first, I guess, because uh, have there been any traffic studies done or any, any anything? Is Was there anything that needed to be done like that? Not that you're aware of. I just figured I'd check with you first because if we had a traffic study done, you guys would know about it. Because these are just all small country roads and if, if there is a large volume and there's going to be increased size of roads, it's going to come, the land is coming from the property owners around the surrounding area. Um, I guess, uh, I guess, Daniel, we're going to need to get you sworn in. Want to raise your right hand? You saw Miss Rita Stevens, you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. State your name and address. Daniel Aronson, 7160 Roy's Road in Winnicani. And did you get all those questions, Dan? Uh, I don't know if I remembered all of them, but I could try. I was going to say, otherwise, I can go through them for you if you want. They had, um, he was asking about the business plan, the uses, and the goals for the property. Uh, yes, we that was part of the application. Um, I think the biggest thing he'll want to hear is that the maximum of there's a maximum over the course of the next 10 years of four small cabins that we're going to accommodate two to three guests each. So that's the plan. So it's a maximum of four different groups. 
I don't know if the application, all the stuff I wrote in the application is open for everybody to see. Um, well, we don't have it up for everybody to see, but okay. it is available online. It is okay. Because oh, yeah, a lot of this says a lot of it says that it's um, it's the the purpose of it is to pour to put four a maximum of four um, small cabins on the property to rent out um, to families to get up, get to the great outdoors basically um the the camper the cabins would have a maximum of two to three people in each one so the number of people would be quite small we wanted to keep it small so to alleviate any um things about parties or lots of traffic or anything like that does, does that does that answer that question for you or? oh it just says short-term rent is for family up to four people and now I'm talking two to three. Well, where does it? One that I sent has two to three. So that two to three. I'm not sure where the four came from. The calendar. Calendar? Can you see that? I got this off your website. It's that one. Oh, it's on the map. It says the current use of the current building is a single short-term rental for families up to four people. That's the current use. Yeah, that's the current one. The new cabins would be two to three people. So it actually would be reducing. The three the four cabins, but yeah. Okay. But they're currently for four people and now they're going down to two or three. So is that what I'm understanding correctly? Dan? Yes, yes. The current one is, is four people. Yeah. Okay. So then they're going to be building three additional buildings for short-term rental. There would be there would be a maximum of four additional buildings. Okay. Okay, so then it'll be five altogether. Is that right? Would that be five altogether? Yes. Okay. Including the one that's already sitting there. Okay. Um. Let's see. We had. Uh, um. As far as management goes, do we have any info on that? Just uh, um, I would be managing it as long as my brother, as my, long as my wife and brother and sister-in-law, my brother and sister-in-law live at 7250 down the street, which would answer another one of those questions. That answers your other question. So, so we're right here on the road. <laughs> okay, and... Um... Savings management, 7250 for property owners. <clears throat> and what was the last one? Impact. Impact. Oh, yeah, the studies. We asked about that. Did you have any? Were there any studies done for you? Or I did not. The, so the, there would be a maximum of five cars if, if all of them were booked at the same time. That's the, but there were no studies, no. Okay. Who are the managing members of Treehouse Properties? That, the, Ownership of Treehouse Properties is my wife and myself. And then who's the property? You're the property owner of 7250? That's, that, that's my brother. Okay. Okay. My brother and sister-in-law. I'm at 7160. What if um, people don't like the great outdoors and camp? Um, what is the likelihood then that you would just use these for rentals for people looking for housing? Mm, um, you mean like long term? Yeah, yeah. Anything over. Oh, there, there are less. They're less than four hundred square feet, so I don't think they'd be adequate for a long someone to stay there long term. And actually, I, I, actually, actually, I believe under the CUP they can't. They'd have to, they'd have to come back different, through to get that different pass. Different require different permits. Yeah, that, to meet our yeah, they wouldn't be able to switch up like that on their own. So that's... Yeah, um, what about waste, sewage? I know um, it's about existing, but if you're putting four additional cabins in... Um, we have Larry Seeley, he did the perk test and he, um, he's been doing this for like 35 years. He figured out a septic tank solution with a mound. 
So he sent that application into the state. Some I don't know how that process works, but the plan is a septic tank with a mound. As you know, I'm obviously against this um, from an environmental standpoint, from a traffic standpoint, and from the standpoint, not all business plans go as you would like. So I'd rather not see this developed into attracting more people since I left California after 30 years of having neighbors on top of neighbors and I love I, I came here for the peace and quiet and the outdoors is why we bought the property where we live now. And again, one good thing, the CUP, they he can't drastically change anything. So it, it, it's either like this or they're going to have to come back and get things approved and reapprove and go through the process again. So as far as that that concern, hopefully that alleviates that concern for you because that's that's one of the reasons is that with this with the conditional use, it, it's for that use. It's not for any use. And they are licensed by our health department as well. Okay. Anybody else on this item? Anybody online? Either speak up, raise your hand with the button. Is that a hand under Terry or is that just it's kind of been there? I think that's the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big orange hand or yellow hand that comes up. <laughs> hey, not seeing anybody else. We will oh um correspondence or communications. Did we do that? Uh no. We do have a re resolution from the town of Winnicani uh, recommending approval. Findings are no negative impact on town, town conditions, maximum four units. Maximum four units. Which is being proposed. Okay. So uh, as soon as I hear that they're a little bit less than 400 square feet, all I think of is tiny homes that we have going up in Oshkosh. And that's a, that can be up to four people living there. And that's short term. So my question, my first question is, what is the length of time that someone can stay at your establishment to rent. Well, so far, we've seen the. I think the longest has been seven days. And then I'll quick jump on that same subject to Carrie. Are you thinking, Carrie, that under these rules, somebody couldn't live there for four to six months? Uh, we're checking here in the okay. standards section. You're not waiting on me, are you? No, no, we're looking something up right now. It looked like you were looking at the screen. I wanted to make sure. I'm looking at him. He's beyond the screen. So I'm speaking. Actually, when I'm looking at you, I'm looking up at the. Okay. <laughs> If we don't have anything in our ordinance that speaks to the length of stay, just that they're licensed by the health department. Could we, I have another question, but could we put a condition on this to limit that, or is that not? So this is um, a conditional use permit, and that is an opportunity to do that. It's reasonable conditions, yes. Okay. All right. Um, because I, I think you can say what you say, but I think things happen differently. Um, and you said one car per unit. Who's controlling that? Because if you had a family of three people and they had two teenage kids, there could be three cars. 
we would just be talking to them, um, messaging them, telling them that our parking is limited and telling, just requiring them to only bring one car. So the, 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 there would only be one parking spot per unit. So we would be talking to them about that. You can park on the street, so, okay. Um, and I'm kind of confused when you say septic tank mound system, it's one or the other. It's both. Both? Yeah. Septic tank is part of the mound system. Yeah. Oh, but it's really a mound system. It's a mound Correct. system. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't know the terminology there. That's okay. I'm just checking that out. Uh, let's see what else do they have. Yeah, those are my two big concerns. So now I'm thinking we can do conversions. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. I have one quick question. Um, see, because we don't want. I just had Mary Beth hit it with them, them uh, many homes. That's what I was just concerned about if that could happen. Okay. Or, um, well, this, did that look? Yeah. <laughs> I, this is more just a curiosity question. How is this different than a motel? You know, you're talking a room with bedrooms. Uh, according to this, there's, uh, there's a bathroom, shower, kitchen. How is that different than a motel? It's in the definition of our campground in our ordinance. So the definition of a campground in the Winnebago County ordinance is as follows, a place where members of the general public may set up tents, campers and trailers, vault types and recreational vehicles, including park model trailers for camping and sleeping purposes. Accessory uses may include individual cabins, a dwelling unit for the manager of the campground and one or more buildings to the house, a laundromat, retail sales for the convenience of campground guests, an office, uh, maintenance equipment, supplies, and related materials. So by definition, it meets the campground in our ordinance, and okay. that's where we're at. I don't, I don't hear that cabins are allowed for guests. I hear cabins for a manager. Um, accessory uses may include individual cabins, comma, a dwelling unit for the manager of oh, the campground. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm sorry about that. No, I you're okay. Different. Okay, so just a few questions. Um, uh, the length of time is uh, an interest of mine to discuss that later. Um, will you be advertising this on Airbnb? Yes. Uh, or Daniel? Okay. Do you do background checks for like sex offenders, anything like that? I do not, I'm not sure we do, Airbnb checks their identity, but I don't know if they check for sex offender or anything like that. I don't know the answer to that one. And what, what is the drinking and drug policy? What's that, say that again? What, what will your drinking and drug policy be? Do you know what the, 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 the uh, application or the agreement looks like? with a, a renter? Uh, there is a no party policy on Airbnb, but they do not prohibit anything to do with um, drugs or alcohol, besides obviously the normal laws. And then I understand total of four, but then we're talking about five. Is that, I guess the question would be for staff, um, the total of four units, is that including this? The established one? Yes. No, there's one established one and they're proposing four units in the circle. So we're so really we're talking five, right? Shouldn't that be changed to five? The one is already there. They're asking for four more. Four. And then um, I guess the question that the resident had about the business plan to show goals and use. Do you have a business plan to show goals and use? Daniel? Not besides what I put in the application, no. Which I which describes the kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. of
and with everybody else asking the questions, I just want to follow up so that way we have this information for our next meeting. I would ask you, Daniel, what would be a reasonable amount of time for for us to put down for a condition as far as length of stay, in your opinion? Uh, I would think um, I'm trying to think of a number that would help alleviate everybody's concerns. Uh, Sixty days. I don't. Sixty. Or Six I, I don't. Six zero. I don't. Yeah. It was close somewhere. I don't know. That I, I would say that's up for you guys to decide. But I would. Right. I, would, I, would I, I just wanted to get. I'm, I'm, I just. I just wanted to get your 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 thoughts on the process so that way when we're discussing it, we at least know kind of the ballpark where you're at. Yeah, yeah. I would say, yeah, 60 days would be way beyond. 30 days would probably be totally fine with me too. Um, is what I was thinking. Was 30 days. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. And, and I see that we had somebody else who came online and they have their hand up. So I'm going to come back to them and let them get their chance to um to to speak here uh doug uh you have, are you there if you're muted you need to unmute yourself doug i see your hand up when he first came in it it popped up with his hand up as soon as he came in so maybe it was an accident i don't know he muted himself yeah. Okay. Well, I'm guessing then you and Doug doesn't have a question or have something to say. Is it okay with the rest of the board if I go back to the gen the gentleman from the area? Sure. Just want to make sure. Seeing as and what is a follow up question of just to not maybe circumvent one of your conditions. If it's a thirty day, you can propose that thirty days the maximum length of stay. If they're not able to circumvent that by moving the renters in the cabin two, the cabin three, the cabin four, the cabin five, which now you're looking at six months almost. Total, same. We need to put in any condition if we do that. Total. Then That's true. <laughs> Am I right? Sounds good. If there's a condition on there, yeah. it'll be a total. We're not sure if we can be more restrictive than the state. But you'll have that information yeah. for us at the next meeting. Yeah. They can do okay, because obviously, we're talking about it, so we can have a conditional a condition on this to review in a year or so, can't we? Yeah, absolutely, yes. yes. Or six months or yep. we we'll yeah. make sure we have that. So, anything else? Any phone numbers? Okay, and not seeing anything else. Let's move on to item number four. Yes. Application number 2023 ZC-6400. Applicant Stephen Cottrell, agent none, location of premises 5944 Gibbs Road, tax parcel number 0260496-02. Legal description being all of lot one of CSM-2140 located in the Southwest quarter of the Northwest quarter of section 23, Township 19 North, range 16 East, Fountain of Inland, Winnebago County, Wisconsin. Explanation, applicant is requesting a zoning map amendment from R1 Rural Residential to A2 General Agriculture as a condition of CSM approval. Okay, thank you. And is the petitioner for this one here? And is there anything that you wanted to say on, to, on this? Or okay. we may come back to you and have some questions for you. And we'll get you sworn in at that time. We'll see if there is anybody else here who's here to speak to that item? Not seeing anybody in person. Is there anybody online that's here to speak to this item? Not seeing anyone there. Come back to the committee. Does anybody on the committee have any questions? I have. I think it's going to be simple. Yeah, we have to have them sworn in first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Yeah. I think this is pretty simplistic. You're just changing from R1 to A2 so you can put up that accessory building. Right, but I didn't have, I had three acres that was R1. 
And then I've got the play of my parents around me. So combining with that together and making it all that's already a two. Okay. And just putting it back in one Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Do we have any correspondence on the item? We do not have any correspondence. Okay, that takes care of our agenda. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Being adjourned.